I'm Dave Mercer. And I'm Matt Pangrak from Bass Talk Live. Welcome to The Cull, a weekly show where we decide whether we are going to cull or keep a hot topic in the world of bass fishing. Matt Pangarak, this week's topic is, should every professional bass tournament pay $10,000 for big bass? I will let you go first because I'm a gentleman. This is an absolute no-brainer to me, Dave. You've got the top 94 guys on the Elite Series at the top of their game. You've got the top 80 at the BPT at the top of their game, fishing for big dollars, $100,000 boat, and rigs, $100,000 payouts at the top. And look at the big bass payouts. The biggest bass, the single cast out of the top anglers in the world for the past 10 years has paid anywhere from zero to $3,000. We're talking about the top guys, Dave. How could you have all the casts that are made and the best cast from the best anglers in the world? You basically get nothing for it. I wouldn't say it's nothing, number one. I would say that they get paid for it, but it's no different than any other sport. I mean, there's no award in football or any, pick any sport you want. And uh, let's pick golf. Uh, Let's pick golf. You ever heard of the hole in one, the Genesis Classic, the BMW Classic? You hit a hole in one, what do you get? You get a BMW, you get a Genesis. It's a seventy dollars to $100,000 car. Okay, yeah, and seventy to a hundred thousand dollars comparatively in the fishing world, compared to what they win if they win that tournament, it probably is right on par with what's paid for big bass in every single professional tournament. It's one moment, and yes, if you are fun fishing, everybody chases the big bass. Everybody likes the big bass, but if it was more important to the sponsors, if it was more important to the anglers, we would see it being paid more. But it's not because you don't hear anglers talk about. Well, I've caught this many big bass. I mean, it's not even on the resume and anglers will put anything. I repeat anything on the resume, but I have yet to see one angler's resume that said I've won the big bass title this many times. Dave, the big bass clash, the big bass smash across the Midwest where I live, the most popular tournaments, we're talking 200 to 500 boats on the water. What are they? They're big bass tournaments with hourly payouts. You go to a local club tournament, you pay $50 $50 for your tournament entry fee and $20 for the big bass side pot. Even if you stink in the tournament, what are you doing in the Wednesday nighter? You got a big one in the live well, you're looking for the big bass side pot. All these guys love catching big bass and getting rewarded for it. And here's the other part. When the Elite Series did away with the big bass, five, eh, it's probably about eight or nine years ago now, dude, they did an angler only under the table side pot for big bass behind the stage. That's how much big bass meant to these guys. I I totally disagree. I mean, you're not comparing apples to oranges. You're going to the big bass smash and the big bass clash and all these things that are recreational events. I'm talking to be at a pro level event, a sport where I remind you that every single pro voted winning you're in out of the elite series, just specifically look at the elite series used to be win a tournament and you're in. It's the hardest thing to do in bass fishing. The best who ever done it has won 25 times in 30 years of competition. So it's so hard to win. And they said that was too lucky. It's too lucky to win a tournament and get into the Bassmaster Classic, we would rather reward consistency. And if you finish 40th in Angler of the Year, you should make the Bassmaster Classic. So by the same thoughts, I mean, Big Bass is literally that. It's one thing. You do get reward. You get whatever the cash value is. You get whatever the media value is. And that Big Bass, if you take, for example, John Cox's 11-pounder from last week, it helped him catapult up the standings and that's exactly what it should do you don't get more points for a touchdown if it's thrown further you don't get more points for a slam dunk if you spun three times in the air unless you're playing you know nba jam or you're in a slam dunk contest so that's my take on it i think you're picking the convenience sports dave because in bowling if you do bowl a 300 on a tv game Guess what your cash prize is? You not only win the tournament, you not only get the cash value of winning the tournament, you also get a $10,000 bonus. Am I talking to the ghost of podcast past? What are you bringing up bowling for? I mean, you're just picking the sports that that, that it does it. Yeah, no, a touchdown is a touchdown. A home run is a home run. But there are individual sports that reward moments, whether you call it skill or whether you call it luck. There's two examples in bowling, individual sport, golf, individual sport that rewards moments. You're telling me that you that that $10,000 
is worth the 47th place angler on the Elite Series who had literally an average tournament and is getting $10,000. Yet, over four days of competition, you have 1,960 hours of competition, 117,600 minutes, and approximately 250,000 casts. But for a guy who finished in the top 48% of the field is getting $10,000. But for the guy who made the cast, the cast that was 0.000004% is only worth $1,000. I don't buy it. I, I, you got a lot of numbers. You cross-threaded my brain right there. I don't even know what, what you were throwing at me. That was a lot of numbers. But let me ask you just a simple question. Who won Big Bass in last year's Bassmaster Classic? Or the year before? Or the year before that? Or the year before that? Nobody remembers Big Bass except for one person, the person that catches them. And uh, so you're telling me that what let's for you said 10th place, you know, or 10 grand you get for, mm -hmm. for 47th place or whatever it is in the elite series. I get that. OK, so you're you're valuing that. Let's say somebody catches one 11 pounder the entire week doesn't make the cut. So did they do better than the guy that, as you say, had an average tournament. I think they should be awarded because yeah, they made the best decision to catch the biggest bass in that tournament. And if you've got guys that are trying to make a living, it's another Avenue to pay more entry fees to make it to the next event. Listen, a lot of these guys are competing in an organization where the title is big bass. It is the first two words, big bass big stage and big dreams. And I would venture to say that the reason we don't remember who the big bass was from the last classic or the classic before that or the classic before that was because it was not put on a pedestal and treated like the big bass it could. Imagine the sponsor push and the host city push if you took this big bass at the end of the event. And I know they get a check the next time they can hold it up for $1,000 and talk about it. But if you had eight memorable bass from each event, be it a seven pounder from the St. Lawrence River, an 11 pounder from the Harris chain, or a nine pounder from Lake Chickamauga. And you know who caught it, what they caught it on. All these guys run cameras. Now you have the video of it. Now you've got line, rods, reels, the battle. You've got a host city that can talk about this giant bass that was caught there. And you've got a check for $10,000. I think it's not noteworthy because it hasn't been made noteworthy, but I think it's an opportunity that's been missed. And I just think that they should be valued more than they are. I disagree. You're saying that things are only noteworthy if they pay, if they pay more. I mean, it, th that's totally untrue. If it, if it was noteworthy, it would get sponsored. You know, if people were after it, I feel like it's a direct result right there. I mean, the money that gets put in by sponsors goes into the things that they see people putting value in. Angler of the year, rookie of the year, things like that get sponsored. I do agree that a big bass is phenomenal to catch, and I love weighing them in. But I do not think that one bite in however many calculated hours you added up there, I do not think that one bite ever is worth more than somebody that weighs in a limit every single day of that tournament and, and has a much better tournament, even if they do finish middle of the pack. They beat half of them, and half of them that they beat – you're not competing at the Bass Splash. You're competing against the best of the best and beating half that field as the angler. Well, I don't even agree that half the field should get paid, to be honest. I think that's one of the wrongest moves in the sport because I think all of a sudden when they introduce $10,000 for last place, we have a whole generation of people that try to fish for $10,000. And the moment you start to fish for $10,000, you stop trying to fish to win. Now I'm off topic, but it doesn't really matter what me and you think. Let's find out what viewers think. This has been the call. You got anything else, Panger? No, but I'm keeping this one. I think it should be $10,000. I'm calling it. I'm calling it. Stupid idea. Reward consistency, not one lucky bite. Let us know what you think. Keep it or call it. And also on that topic with this show called The Call, should we keep it or call it? Panger, I'm out.